<laughs> oh, Father God, we do thank you for what you're doing today. And Lord, we are just so, so dependent upon you. And Lord, today I've been looking forward to shooting this sacred cow. And Lord, <laughs> may my aim be accurate and may the bullet be true. Lord, we just want to make sure we get this one. We just thank you, Father, for all you're doing for us. And may the word be open to us all. May we just love you and be taught. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, I'm really excited. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I've always talked about sacred cows. Those are those things that sit out in your pasture and eat all your goods and you can't do anything about them. This is one of those. Oh, so this is a motherhood and apple pie kind of a thing, what? right? Yeah. yeah, well, it's just amazing. This whole country is starving to death, and all these cows are running around, mm -hmm. and uh, they can't touch them. Just like a sacred India. cow. That's what I'm talking about. Yep. So here we go. Okay, little little review. Today we're going to be talking about an age-old enemy, so that's going to be fun. But before we get there, we're going to do a little bit of review about last week. Okay. Have you ever been in a crowd of people? Yes, we have. Mm -hmm. And even though there are many, many, many people, you feel alone. Mm -hmm. The whole idea behind being alone in a crowd is like a, just an amazing thing that you can be surrounded by people and feel absolutely and totally alone. Well, this is one. This is one of the greatest problems. Is that when people come in, I've been talking about the whole series is on helplessness and people feeling helpless. One of the ways they feel helpless is when they feel alone. And I think it's just kind of fascinating that you can have a house full of children and feel alone. Oh, hi, mom. Here's is it your mom? Yeah. So. The loneliness is one of those big deals. We all encounter it, and even when you're around people, you say stuff, but nobody knows. Mm -hmm. It's one of those secrets. It's the secret of being alone until they come in for absolute, my whole life is falling apart, you know, it's okay. This is one of the most common issues of people being alone, feeling alone, okay? No one knows what's happening to me. And along with that comes the, the real judgment that says, and no one cares. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a, a trap, okay? Because the problem being loneliness is a bad news problem. Uh, one of the parts with loneliness is that no one knows how I feel. Mm -hmm. um, one of the big issues that we do, do in the training for face-to-face -face is that sometimes people just need to tell their story. Because mm. nobody's ever heard their story. So they just need to have somebody here, you know, what's going on? What happened in my life, right? And so uh, no one knows how I feel. It's a very, very big deal. Even in a crowded household and a very busy life, you can be around people all day long and nobody knows you, okay? We tend to be alone in our thoughts and feelings. How do you share them? How many times have you actually expressed your thoughts well? Okay, you can express some of it, and yet it gets, and you expect people to pick up on the little subtle hints and fill in the blanks and know it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're good at that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, some of us are truly alone. I mean, there are, really, you're not around anybody, you're not around anything, and you are truly alone in society. There's seven billion people on the planet, and I am alone. And I've known too many people like this. Mm -hmm. I've just known too many. No one really wants to know me, they are too alone. And so they made the judgment that they will never have anybody. So that's really too bad. So people are screaming for attention. Now this is true all the time. People are always screaming for attention. So we looked at some scripture last week. Second Timothy chapter 4, 16, 17, Paul said, in my first defense, no one was beside me, but all deserted me. I mean, you can hear all the emotion in that, okay? May it not be reckoned to them, okay? You, you try not to say that vindictively, you know? You want to say that very, you know, the, the very saintly way. And may it not be reckoned to them, you know? But you know how he feels. He is Jewish. So, anyway, but the Lord stood with me. Wow. <laughs> and gave me power. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
But through me the preaching might be fulfilled, and all the nations might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Even the Apostle Paul felt abandoned, but there was a reason behind it. God wanted him to know that no matter if everybody abandons him, the Lord was with him. He says, but the Lord stood with me and gave me power. He had to elevate his view. Elevate his view from being alone to the Lord stood with me and gave me power. Okay, they're all right there in the same verses. Okay, no one was beside me; all deserted me. But the Lord stood with me and gave me power. That is the whole issue behind all of this. He needed to know. God wanted him totally alone in his first defense. Wanted him completely alone. Why? So you'd learn who to trust. You learned what was really going on. And that you, if you're trusting in people to come deliver you, that sometimes that doesn't happen. So you better trust the one who can, right? So it changed that. John 16, and we'd covered a lot more territory. I'm going to cover this briefly, but this is on the way to Gethsemane after the Passover Seder. Okay, after they've had Passover, and he, at the end of chapter 14, he says, "Let us go from here." So they left there. Chapter 15, chapter 16 is all on the road to Gethsemane. Chapter 17, which is the whole prayer thing that he does, he prays for them, and he prays for the people who believe after him, and the whole other thing, that's still on the road to Gethsemane. That's three chapters of some of the most packed stuff ever to 11 guys, because Judas had already left, and they had just had a very large meal and four glasses of wine. <laughs> okay. And he's going to be... He's going to be talking to them the deepest stuff in the Scripture. Okay, but this is one of the things he says. He says, Behold, the hour is coming, and now has come, that you are scattered, each one to his own things, and you will leave me alone. He's telling them the truth here, okay? Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I have spoken these things to you, that you may have peace in me. You have distress in the world, but be encouraged. I've overcome the world. I'll always be with you, but you're not always going to be with me. You're going to leave me tonight. Isn't that just kind of a wild little thing? He knew his aloneness, okay? But he did say, because the Father is with me. Because the Father is with me. Guys, you're all going to run. I get it. <laughs> but the Father is with me. But at one point after that on the cross, even the Father turned his back. Jesus knew aloneness more than anybody had ever known aloneness. Okay? I, that's my big point. Is that he understands. He knows what it's like to be alone. And then, okay, so he's doing something about it. In Romans 8, uh, 9, and, 9 through 11. <laughs> Romans 8. Okay, but you are not in flesh but in spirit since the Spirit of God dwells in you. How alone are you? Spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone is not has not the Spirit of Christ, this one is not His. But if Christ is in you, the body indeed is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of the one having raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one having raised the Christ from the dead will also make your mortal body live through the indwelling of His Spirit in you. That's exactly what you needed to hear, Jennifer. Right there, there it is. The one raised the mortal Jesus from the dead will make your mortal body live through the indwelling. So your body has that power. There you go. See, I'm taking care of you again. Amen. 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 All right. Now she can sign off. No, she can't. No. <laughs> Not allowed. All right. But he's also making your mortal body live how? the indwelling of the Spirit in you. So look at this. Verses 9 through 11, three times in there it talks about how the Holy Spirit dwells in you, dwells in you, dwells in you, dwells in you, dwells in you. He's driving this point home that are we ever alone? No, the Holy Spirit is always continually living within us. That is huge. The Holy Spirit lives in your spirit. I just always, always has cracked me up when people say, I just feel like my, my prayers didn't make it past the rafters. Well, why are you shooting him up there? <laughs> oh my God, that's exactly what I just heard this morning on, another <laughs> on a different continent. Yes, oh, that's good. It's just, but it's just it. Is why are you praying up there? You, he's right inside you. How close can he get? Does he hear my prayers? He's inside you. He hears you. He knows every thought. 
He knows everything. He absolutely every... Prayer is the simplest thing on the planet. Even when you've messed up. Because the Holy Spirit can't leave you. Yeah. So, where's your prayer life? It's right, right there. Just boom. Okay. It requires revelation, not information. Okay? We can teach about it and teach about it and teach about it, but it's getting the revelation of having the Holy Spirit living within you that's going to make the difference. Mm -hmm. Not about teaching. It's not about information. It requires revelation. People will do anything to not be alone. Anything. What does that anything mean? Anything that brings likeness of thought or purpose. So because of that, we have cults, religions, secret societies, gangs, mobs, mm -hmm. BLM, Antifa, whatever thing you want, Democratic Party, you know, all these occults. <laughs> anyway, uh, did, did I put that in there? I'm sorry, that's just okay. So wait a minute, is that what California is going to be? That's why it's going to fall into the sea, because it's okay. Go beyond logic to belong. People it. will go beyond what is logical just to belong to something. Yeah. You just go, well, that doesn't make any sense. It makes total sense if you're looking at it emotionally, not intellectually. Mm -hmm. Emotionally, they're with people. Mm -hmm. And they think those people love them. They think those people... Are with what has been the biggest revelation... For so many people, is all these people who get born again out of the gangs, and they come out and said, "I did the gangs because I had no family. My dad was gone, my mom was gone, everything." Was, and I did that to get family. And he says, and I realized they didn't care for me. Mm -hmm. And these people get born again out of the gangs, and they go, "Now we know what family really is." Amaro Murillo is having all these tent meetings out in California, and it just they're coming to his tent meetings by the droves in gangs and stuff and getting born again by the hundreds. And he says, they're all, it's just, you know, you need to hear a good report once in a while, but yeah. this has been happening with Mario. The last couple of years has just been just tent meeting after tent meeting after just packed and told he couldn't meet and did it anyway. Okay, because California says, no, we're shutting down everything. So they'll shut down what you want, but we're having our meetings. And they couldn't do anything about it and people get born again. Mm. And what are they going to do? That's okay. Awesome. The us versus them mentality, okay, we'll get it because if you have an enemy, that makes you closer to the people on your side, okay? So then you have something in 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 common in a, you know as you're being together on that thing, yeah. you're fighting together for a cause that so makes you feel more close, okay? Did you just said BLM. I did, you know, the Bureau of Land Management. <laughs> okay, we have. I'm trying to do this oh with a straight face. <laughs> she could not figure out what are they talking about the Bureau of Land Management for? I don't understand. No, honey, it's Black Lives Matter. Oh, amazing. We have beyond intimacy with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so, there's a little personal thing in there. That's cute. Well, you have to understand where I was at the time. <laughs> We, so we have beyond intimacy with the Holy Spirit, which is God, which is oh trying to tell people this, okay? Yeah. If you have never experienced intimacy with the Holy Spirit, you don't know that it's available. True. Absolutely true. Okay? And it's right there, and yet people just, they're carrying the Holy Spirit around with them and don't know that intimacy. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a big deal. Hebrews. Yay! Chapter 13. <laughs> I've never done a word by word through Hebrews. Oh my goodness. That would take a while, I think. I, that's why I said, oh my goodness. <laughs> well, if we ever make it through Ephesians. If we ever do. We might. Just think about it, Hebrews. Can you imagine Hebrews? That would be... Oh, word for word? No. No. Okay, set your... You'd be dead by the time you're done. <laughs> that's what they're saying. Why, thank you, Annette. Thank you. Okay, set your... <laughs> Uh, this is a good good crew today. Okay. Wow. Hebrews 13, 5 through 6. I'll take it the right way. I'll Thank take it you. the right way. You want. Okay. Set your way of life without money loving, being satisfied with present things. For he has said, not at all will I leave you, not at all will I forsake you. Never. Mm -hmm. That's right out of Deuteronomy 31, 6. Okay. He's quoting it. Never. So we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What shall man do to me? That's right out of Psalms 118.6. Okay? 
So the writer of Hebrews is just throwing this stuff together here and it just makes sense. Okay? Living in you has always been God's focus. He's always wanted that super intimate relationship. He's always, since, since Eden, man, that's been his plan. So you are fulfilling the plan of the ages. How cool, huh? How cool. Okay, one more biggie and then we'll go on to the new stuff. Matthew chapter 28, 19 and 20. Having gone, and therefore having gone, disciple all nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things, whatever I commanded you. That's called discipling and that's our job in life. And he says, and behold, I am with you all the days to the completion of the age. Making disciples is our job on the earth. He will always be with you in that job. You want to do something that has the presence of God with it? Disciple somebody. It will mess up your whole life. It will change things. It will absolutely change everything you believe. You'll have to firm it up. Okay. So your whole focus should be outward, not inward. This is kind of the key to this whole loneliness thing is if you're thinking of you and thinking of you and thinking of you, you will be lonely. If you're thinking of others and thinking of others and thinking of others, uh, you won't. So get your view straightened out. Poke it in the right direction. Would you say that also just like the lighting in the work in the Lord is also like... Certainly. A, you know, it's all about, like, all about out of you. Yeah. You mm-hmm. As long as you're focused in you, you will get lonely because you are a bad God. Selfish focus, bad guy. Selfish focus versus fur. I did it all messed up there. Selfish focus versus servant focus. Go ahead and say that one five times fast. Okay. Now, okay. The idea is if it's focused on you or it's focused on serving other people. Jesus said, I did not come to be served, but to serve and give my, ran- my soul as a ransom for many. So laying down our soul is the big focus. Love is laying down our soul. And that means what? It's the end of selfishness. You have to know His presence to do that. You have to. You just have to know He's there to, to lay down his, your soul. If you're laying it down at the foot of the Father, how are you going to pick up something if you don't know His presence? Right? Yeah. It's kind of a problem. The mind, the will, and the emotions of the Father in you, through you, to somebody else. You don't have time to be alone. You know, there's too many things to do. Listen to what he is continually telling you. He is continually telling you to go do, go do, go do. Having already gone, therefore, make disciples. You're already going. Okay. You aren't alone if you are continually discipling. You're never alone if you're continually discipling. There's always somebody in your life that needs you. And you just can't get rid of them. And you just can't get rid of them. <laughs> I'm not going to say any more. Okay, you are not alone. Self-pity is manipulation. (laughs) Eternal thinking versus temporal. I will not be waylaid. (laughs) Eternal thinking versus temporal thinking. Spending time with Him. Which has been kind of our catch-all solution to everything all along, isn't it? Because Jesus is the answer. Click. Okay. That was a very quick synopsis on that. <laughs> I didn't get hung up in Romans 8. I didn't get hung up in, in Hebrews. I didn't go, oh, God, I just cut down on John. Not bad. A lot of self control. Yes. Go Good boy, Lee. That's because Lee knows he's got a mountain ahead of him today. Okay. Here we go. Let's go on to our. Our job for the day. I have been wanting to shoot this one in the foot. And every time I turn around teaching about this, and somebody always brings up another point. Well, what about, and what about, and what about? And I haven't waffled on any part of it. Okay? I am still, I hate the, the whole premise about this thing, and so it makes me kind of focused. We are Christians, right? Yes, sir, read Bob, and we read the Bible. What a concept. We actually pray. Yes. We actually go to church in some kind of capacity somehow in way, shape, or form. We might even wear jewelry and T-shirts that prove that we're Christians. <laughs> His always proved that he worships bacon, but that's 
a whole <laughs> nother thing. In general. <laughs> Hey, look. Bacon or ramen Ooh, noodles, okay, yeah. I just, you know, okay. hey, yeah, okay, so here we go. The Muslims are miserable, and the Jews are miserable, and it's both because neither of them eat bacon. So. That must be it. <laughs> so, hey, okay. That is free from that sacred cow, so, <laughs> for claiming freedom. We'll just go on here, okay? To the world, we're fanatics and religious zealots, okay? That's, what, that's how they're looking at Christians, yeah. okay? We're goody two-shoes. They're holier than thou. I love that song that I've been doing on called Mississippi Squirrel Revival. Okay, <laughs> the church is called the First Self Righteous Church. <laughs> and there's a lady in there called Sister Bertha Better Than You. <laughs> That's her name, is Sister Bertha Better Than You. Okay, so people get this. I this is what, and it's not all wrong. They've been got got this from a lot of people. Okay, makes for a huge problem. Okay, let's talk about the problem. Let's talk about Satan's problem. Satan had a problem. Boy, did Satan have a problem. He went and killed Jesus. Three days later, Jesus shows up again. He thought he had gotten rid of Jesus. He thought he had, that he had killed him. That was, that was wild. And Jesus comes back to life. Satan does not have all knowledge, people. He just he deceives. Deceivers can be deceived. So he being the main deceiver, he also gets deceived. He thinks, still thinks he's going to win. I don't understand. He's just not very brilliant. <laughs> but he tried everything to kill this Christianity right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So what did he do? He brought in persecution. What did it do? It spread everybody through the diaspora, and all of a sudden, boom, Christianity was all over the known world. And Satan's rocking back going, well, that didn't work. He tried it everywhere he tried it. It just spread, and people were just... And it just threw him for a loop. So 300 years it took Satan. He fought and fought and fought and did everything he could to destroy Christianity. He finally came up with the right plan. He came up with a plan. 300 years. What did he come up with? He came up with religion. Because instead of making it bad, he made it acceptable. And then he started putting caveats on it and making people have to earn it and people having to be part of this and part of that. And all of a sudden, he changed the whole thing and made it into religion. Constantine, being one of the main propagators of this whole thing, who the, as the, the emperor of Rome, he decided we're going to make Christianity the state religion and he even marched troops through a lake to baptize them. He made it so that the main pagan religions were now kind of turned over to Christianity and this is why we celebrate Christmas on, or on right. December 25th. There was a spring holiday and it was called Oster. And he turned it into Easter. Easter. Okay, he made all these things and it took all the beauty and out of it and made it into this religious thing that everybody had to do this and do that and do that and do this. So we've come to some very interesting concepts since then. For one, we know we aren't good enough. We just know it. We've been taught this by, and I don't care what form of even... Hey, all of them. Evangelicals. But even Christian religion has done this to us. I don't <laughs> care what form. Okay? Catholics, evangelicals, Pentecostals, I don't care. Okay? Or the Christian scientists, which are like grape nuts. It's neither grape nor nuts, but it's not Christians nor scientists, so it's Christian science. Okay. It's kind of, you know, all this sort of stuff has just been thrown our way. And knowing most of our stories, <laughs> okay, we've all been affected by it in some way, shape, or form or another. Every time we are compared to holiness, we lose. Okay? And so people have tried to make rules about how to be holy. And if you, if you, you know, women have got to wear these kind of clothes or they're, they're just not holy. Okay, and we've seen this down through down through all sorts of stuff in history on, on how this is supposed to work and you have to do certain things and when I first tried to look through the Eddie family 
tree. I was down at the Denver Public Library looking up the Eddie lineage, and I found this convict. I was one of the most worst, horrible sinners you could ever find in your own life. Boy, the own heritage. Wow, the things I had. What in the world? This woman drove a carriage on Sunday. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, the whole place was up in a furor because she drove a carriage on Sunday. Wow. Okay. Unbelievable. Yeah, and it's just like, uh, whoa, whoa, okay. So we are bad, sin riven, condemned sinners. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. Go home. That's it. That's it. That's what you needed to know. Okay. We have been told we aren't sinners so many times, but we feel how bad we are. See, it's not just coming mm-hmm. against our intellect, but we come against yeah. past teachings. We come against feelings. We come against, well, I did this wrong, so therefore I must not be good. Yeah, we know you did it wrong. We all watched it. It's all good. You're fine. Let's go on. <laughs> Okay, it's just like, it's so ridiculous how this is that as we go to explain these things today, it, it's going to be, well, yeah, but no, it's, it's bad. This has been, okay, just bad. What happens if you can never measure up? Well, that's what I grew up with, okay? That's how I grew up. You could never measure up, okay? We are afraid and we're very ashamed of close scrutiny. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord have mercy. You don't wanna you don't wanna get to the point where somebody's actually examining your life. You know, one person looking at it is bad enough. You get two or three looking at it and then you're really in trouble. You get a whole congregation looking at you. you know, giving you the stink eye. It just man, it's bad news. You don't want that kind of scrutiny. So what have we been taught? Mm-hmm. We're fine, thank you. Shiny mm-hmm. plastic people. Shiny plastic people. <laughs> well, some of us are shiny, but that's beside the point. Okay, so <laughs> guilt smacks us down when we're asked to serve, or guilt smacks us down when we're not asked to serve. Oh, they didn't ask me, so I must not be good enough. Or they did ask me, I'm not good enough. So we know we never we never win. Okay. <laughs> What? Schizophrenic. Yes, yes, we are. I hope everybody is feeling what I'm dishing out here, okay? Conviction versus guilt or condemnation. I didn't know what conviction was. I always knew the guilt and the condemnation. Okay? Too bad. I didn't know what my functional kidneys were. Boy, I had to learn that. When I learned that in the Scripture, it kind of like changed my whole life. Because it's right there. The Lord has given us things to deal with the sin within us, and yet religion has made it so that we have to do it by our flesh, mm-hmm. controlling our flesh. Mm-hmm. Jeremiah 17, Yeah, it doesn't work. Flesh does not work for that. Okay. Revelation versus the lies we believed. Okay. Man, I had this one. I had to get revelation, but I was taught the lies and hammered the lies home. Hammered to me all every Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night and every youth group and every, every just meetings, four, five, six meetings a week and every one of them told me how bad I was. Mm-hmm. And then you wonder, how come I believed I was so bad? Because then I, I confirmed it by actually doing things that were bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's true. Mercy. I did it the opposite. I, I was damned already anyways. I might as well do it. Might as well do it, huh? Yeah, yeah. until later. And then the guilt comes in and then and you're right. messed up f- right. for anything you'd do after that. Changing what we have been taught, which is kind of a big deal, is that I knew somebody that I was trying to say, I was trying to tell them about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and how it changed my life. And all he said was, well, that's not what I was taught. So? This is the truth. Right. But that's not what I was taught. So you wouldn't wouldn't even consider it because that's not what I was taught. Okay? So to this day, he is still totally ineffective and weak. Mm-hmm. He had an opportunity and didn't take it. Now this whole idea kept me in porn for 20 years. The whole idea mm-hmm. is you're bad, you're junk, you're crud, and it's proven because mm-hmm. look what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And then I'd fall because I had no capacity of not falling and nobody to help me out from falling. So mm-hmm. this thing just kept me in that trap for forever. A sinner who had to sin and couldn't be free. 
and yet you're supposed to be giving the good news to everybody around you. I didn't see any good news. I didn't own any good news. And Jesus has come to save you as a sinner and you're going to go to heaven. It was the only good news I had. Mm-hmm. But up until that point, uh, after that, you're done. You're mm-hmm. toast. You're junk. You're crud. Okay. And that lie still pokes its head up now and then. Really, I'm not kidding. I'll be doing something and it'll, it'll just just pokes up. It's like whack-a-mole. I, you know, I whack it. And it goes down underground for a while. And, but I, I get the revelation of this thing. But it really, the religion of this thing is so mm-hmm. pervasive. You and I are on that word. We got that. And it's just, it's everywhere. And it just, and it just has been so much. So it's been a real lifelong battle on mine to get rid of this thing. It's a constant fight against a constant pressure. And some of us have really experienced that. Others, and not so much, but you still have, you've been affected by the religion of it. Okay? So I'm just trying to bring this all up. So I decided as I started working on this, I thought, well, I better look to scriptures and see. Well, this thing turned out that I could more than have just a message on this. This could be a whole series. Here's a whole bunch of stuff about this. Okay. So I'm going to just hit a couple of them. <coughs> if I don't hit your favorite, then oh well. smack Nathaniel afterward. Okay. I'm tough. I won't feel it. Yeah, you won't feel it. Okay, Galatians chapter 3, verses 2 and 3 says this. This only I desire to learn from you, Galatians. Now, wait a minute. Let me back that up. I don't want you looking at that yet. I want to I <laughs> set this thing up for you. We were heading off to Arizona, my wife and I, this last year, right? Mm-hmm. And so we decided we were just going to Every morning, we're in the car. We're just going to read the scriptures. Just you know, we've we've done that before, but just a little passage. But we thought we we're going to do whole books this time. We're just going to just read through something. So we we read through Ephesians. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. But what comes before Ephesians? Galatians. Galatians. So. I, it was my turn to read. I mean, I was starting it. So I said, okay, here's the thing. You have to read Galatians with the proper attitude. Because Paul wrote the thing mad. He was upset. He was ticked off. So read it like it is. And so I read the whole thing to her. Just mad. Just And it makes the whole sense. The whole thing just gels together. It all runs together, that thing. Because he just he is he's trying to prove to them this is bad news. So he starts off with, Who has bewitched you that you would believe another gospel other than the one I preached to you? What's wrong? You just like... And he's just, he's upset. Because he preached to them a total freedom. And then people came through and says, Oh, now that you're a Christian, you have to be a Jew. And you have to do with the whole law. And they're called the Judaizers. And they put all the religion back on the people who had been set free. And so all these Gentiles who had never been Jews were suddenly being told they had to be Jews. And they're putting all this burden of religion on them. And Paul writes, with a flaming quill, I might add. <laughs> oh, that must have been hard to hold. Do I have <laughs> So, and it's just fun because that thing, you read the book, upset, and you'll get it. So, now we know that in Galatians chapter 3, I'll read this correctly. Here we go. Three Verses 2 and 3, it says, This only I desire to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by works of law or by hearing of faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, do you now perfect yourself in the flesh? Wow. Isn't that good? Yeah. Just, oh, yeah. Well, that makes sense. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the way it is. But it's so true. He says, having begun in the Spirit, you're going to perfect yourself in the flesh. Mm-hmm. Now, like let's that. look at our lives. And we look back, mm-hmm. and we started with the Holy yeah. Spirit coming yeah. into our lives. And now we're going to perfect it by us doing religion. <laughs> okay? We're shooting this thing right in the trash. There's that sacred cow. He's kind of hiding behind the bush going, don't shoot me. Oh, no, we're shooting. We're going to blow the whole bush away. Okay? This is the whole idea. Did you receive the Spirit by works of law huh. or by hearing of faith? Are you so foolish? Okay. So, either do Spirit or do flesh. <laughs> and man, you know, if I did a series on this, there would be a whole couple messages on just how to define flesh. <clears throat> yeah, everybody says... Couple series? Couple series? <laughs> no, a couple messages. <laughs> but see, now everybody goes... 
I don't think you need to do that series. It's good. Thank you. We're fine. Thank you. <laughs> so, if it wiggles, stab if it wiggles, stab it. All right. Trying to be perfect and failing miserably. Can we only use grace once, and then we're on our own? No, no, no. No, but that's what it's. That's what people try to do. Oh, we've done the grace. Now, now we're going to perfect the rest by we're on our own. No, no, that's not the way it works. We still have seen ourselves as unworthy. Okay, that's not the idea. Okay. To continue. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, it says, Then stand firm in the freedom which Christ made us free, and do not be held again with a yoke of slavery. Stand firm. Stand up, come on. Quit waffling to the old stupid stuff. Stand firm to it. Grow back though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that spine thing. Yeah. Religion teaches that you are never free. But you keep slowly working on being holy. And that's totally against Scripture where it says that God has created us to be righteous and truly holy. Mm. Created. I'm a new man in Christ. I'm already created righteous and holy. All I have to do is get rid of hardness of heart. And what do I have? I have everything of the Spirit coming into my soul. Therefore be holy as I am holy. Yeah, what a concept. Because He is. And you are. And we keep trying to act like, oh, I need to work on this. But we're missing the point, mm-hmm. folks. And that you can never get there. We've always been taught, well, you can never quite get there. I think it's kind of fascinating. Why would the Lord put things up in the Scriptures if we weren't able to do them? Mm-hmm. See, that makes sense. Okay, totally contrary to the truth. What's the truth? The truth is you can. The truth is that you can be absolutely, totally pleasing to the Lord. How? Can somebody quote for me out of Hebrews 11, verse 6? Anybody? Even online? Hmm? Anybody? Faith. What's well, about faith? Without faith, it is a possible to please, please God. For those who come to Him must believe that He exists and that He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. Mm-hmm. You guys need to memorize that scripture. That's a good one for you. Yeah. Hebrews 11, 6, for those of you who need to write that down. Okay. In Colossians. Now there's Colossians. Now we went through Galatians and then we went through Ephesians and reading Colossians is like what? It's like walking through theological mud the whole way because he's throwing this stuff that's just so deep all around you. This throws it around and you're going, stop! What did that say? What do you mean? Huh? What did you stop? Stop! What are you doing? No! No! Go back! No! And so we're reading through this thing just... So, Colossians says this. I love Colossians. Colossians has some stuff in it. Yeah, it says, And you, being dead in the deviations and the uncircumcision of your flesh... He made alive together with Him, having forgiven you all the deviations. Mm. Makes me think of math. What? Deviations makes me think of math. Yeah, well, okay. Deviations, math would work, but anything that gets you off the path Mm -hmm. to deviate, a deviant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Having forgiven you all the deviations, blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances against us. Now, Ever felt guilty? No, no. Kind of lived on that block? Okay. Well, wait a minute. That's not the way Jesus wants us living. Mm-hmm. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances against us. He took everything that had been written against us and blotted it out. Mm. Which was contrary to us. Even He has taken it out of the middle, out of the midst, nailing it to the cross having stripped the rulers and the authorities, he made a show of them public, triumphing over them in it. There's some words in here that are just too, too cool. Okay? Jesus took our sins, all the accusations, all the stuff that was against us, took it out of the middle of everything and nailed it to the cross. Now wait a minute. Hmm. He took it out of the midst, nailing it to the cross. All that we di- that Jesus died for died on the cross. 
it's gone. It's not there. Blot it out. Nailed to the cross. And then he says, having stripped the rulers and the authorities, he made a show of them in public, triumphing over them in it. Now I'll get to that word in a minute. And I'll get right back to it. But I've got to touch a few things here. There is nothing left to accuse you. Some of us have actually been to the courts of heaven. Mm-hmm. Okay? We talk to the accuser of the brethren while we're there because he's there. He's yelling and screaming, you did this wrong, you did this wrong. So he looked at his father and said, Father, would you please silence the accuser? And it has been really some of the funniest stuff I've ever seen as people tell what happened when they're there before the father and the father shuts up the accuser of the brethren. Okay, it's kind of fascinating. Uh, one one gal was sitting there and she was looking over and she saw this this person and she figured out it was Satan. Then and he's just just saying all this stuff and he's just like this. And all of a sudden he just went like this and his mouth was completely molded shut. And he's sitting there going <laughs> without opening his mouth. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Another one saw a, an iron clamp go around his face. Okay, I mean just he's shut up. Why can we do that? Isn't he right? No. Because all the accusations have been nailed to the cross. There's nothing left to accuse you. Everything written against you died on the cross. You say, but I've made mistakes since then and some of them were deliberate and I even did some really stupid, gross and disgusting sins. How nice. What did Jesus say about them when you talked to him? Oh, has, I forgot to talk to him. Oh, yeah, you forgot to talk to him about that. Huh? <laughs> Maybe that's the problem. But every single person we've ever asked that has come to Jesus said, Lord, would you please forgive me for that? He says, you are forgiven. Mm-hmm. Every single time, without fail. Mm-hmm. And many, most of the time, people say, I have already forgiven that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's just like, why are we messing with this? Okay? Good question. It is a very good question. Okay. All religion finds you to not be enough. Mm-hmm. Everything finds you to not be enough. Jesus took it all. And then what did he do? He made you enough. He just did all of it as long. You're enough. To not see that is to speak against his blood. Mm. Thought I'd make sure we understood this. <laughs> you want to be guilty of something. There, you there it is. <laughs> right there. To not see it is to speak against his blood. Because that's exactly... His blood says it's all done. And we're saying it's not. Jesus bought a relationship for you. He bought it. He purchased it with his own blood. He didn't buy religion for you. He bought a relationship for you. Now, this is the fun thing. Back in that verse it says that... I'll just run back real quick. There it is. It says he right there at the bottom. It says nailing to the cross, having stripped the rulers and the authorities, he made a show of them public, triumphing over them in it. The word triumphing there is the Greek word threeumbuo. Okay, one of my faves because the threeumbuo was okay. If you ever watched the movie Ben Hur, there was a threeumbuo in there. If you ever watched the movie um, The Gladiator, Mm -hmm. there's a three on view in there. What that is, is when they came back to Rome triumphant. Right. They had a triumphant procession. Right. What had bands and people playing and armies and chariots and I mean everything they had marching down through the people on all sides yeah, they're shouting throwing flowers out of it it's just, it's just a great big deal and they would come down to where the emperor was they'd get off and come back up on top and be given a laurel wreath or something that just show that he is the the conqueror of the Gauls or whatever okay that was called a three buo in the process they would have prisoners from the people that they had conquered, mm-hmm. mostly the higher ranking officials. They'd strip them naked. They were absolutely, totally naked. And they were in bonds, and they had chains around their hands and around their necks, and they were led through all of this, everybody pointing at them, throwing trash at them, spitting on them, doing whatever, okay, because they're the bad enemies. They're the bad ones. They were exposed. They were stripped. There they were. And they had guys right behind them, the army, with their lances down, not held up, 
but held down. If these guys decided to slow up a little bit, you got poked. <laughs> okay? They don't have anything to protect them, no. so you better keep moving, okay? And this is like this is the three imbuel. It shows absolute triumph over an enemy. Yeah. Having stripped the rulers and the authorities, he made a show of them in public, triumphing over them in it. To me, <laughs> it's such a perfect picture because I get that. I can see that whole thing happening. You know, there's nothing left to accuse you. All this, the triumvirate, the triumphant procession, the conqueror standing victorious over enemies. Amen. Okay. Amen. And yet, in our religious way of thinking, we are still thinking that we have to conquer the enemy mm -hmm. and that we are down and he has power over us mm -hmm. and he is all this. And so all the religion keeps us ineffective and has since he drew, we drummed this up clear back in Constantine. The a religion of it has kept us ineffective. He couldn't fight it, so he made it acceptable and then made rules. Okay? And we're still under that. And we're still under that. So Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 through 19 says, Then do not let anyone judge you in eating or drinking or in parts of a feast or of a new moon or of Sabbaths, which are a shadow of things to come, or how many times you do your rosary or, you know, whatever. Okay. Say the Hail Marys. Uh, how many Hail Marys have you done? Okay, which are a shadow of the coming things. But the body is of Christ. Let no one condemn you. What? Mm. Let no one condemn you. Delighting in humility and worship of the angels, pushing into things which he has not seen, being puffed up by the mind of his flesh without cause, and not holding fast the head. That's the part. In our religion, what is it? Delighting in humility. Just don't do it. Just, just, take, you know, just, uh, just have nothing. Do nothing. Just sit there and pray all day and do nothing. And I have had this real problem with monasteries, mm -hmm. cloisters, this whole thing where they just put people off. Even the Essenes back in the in Jesus' time, where people just sat off and did nothing and did nothing. But they did their daily humbling, do their things, and it just it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. If that's not that's not what God has called us to be, to go sit on a mountainside somewhere and do nothing. Mm -hmm. Including you. Yeah. Okay. Being puffed up in the mind of the flesh without cause, and not holding fast the head, which is the cause, the big key here. From whom all the body have been supplied through the joints and the bands and being joined together will grow with the growth of God. See, this whole thing is all these things are keeping you oppressed and keeping you down. And then if you know the head, then you've been supplied through all the joints and, and bands and you're joined together with others and you're being built up to grow into what? Well, Ephesians calls that being grow, grown up into the full stature of the stature of Christ. What's his whole goal? Is to make you more Christ-like. Cool. Totally cool. It goes on. Verses 20 through 23, and it says this. If then you died with Christ from the elements of the world... Why are you under his decrees as living in the world? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. Which things are all, okay, these are all under the decrees of the world. Do not handle, uh, do not touch. Which all things are for corruption in the using, according to the injunctions and teachings of men, which things indeed appear to be a matter of having wisdom. They uh, look right. Mm -hmm in self-imposed worship and humility and severity and abuse of the body but are of not any value with regards to gratification of the flesh. Mm. Now, I did this. I did everything. I, uh, I would do services. I would do whatever. I'd done my porn thing and I'd freaked myself out and I was guilty as the day is long and, and then I'd go to the church and I would do stuff and I would do all these things for people and I would go work. I said, oh, isn't he just a wonderful Christian? <laughs> 
What was I doing? I was beating myself up trying to get myself to pay for the sin that I'd just done. Mm-hmm. Anybody relating to any of this? 100%. Okay. This is the whole issue is I couldn't pay for it. Yeah. There's only one person who could. I did not go to the head. I did not keep the head in mind. I did the other things. I were under the decrees. Don't touch. Don't touch. Don't handle. Don't anything. You know, bad, bad, bad. You're bad. You did it again. Bad, bad. Uh, God, I hated it. Is anybody relating? Okay, this is the whole issue. And it did nothing for getting me out of it. Mm-hmm. The more I beat myself up, then the more I beat myself up after I did it again. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Just like, it didn't help. You mean the scripture is actually true? It did not of any value in regards to gratifying the flesh. <laughs> so this is that passage. It's like, this makes too much sense. Why don't we read this? Okay. I'm trying my hardest. Okay. What Christ has done should be functional. Amen. Why go back to what keeps us in bondage? Fear of the unknown. It's just like, right, <laughs> see, right there, it's <laughs> face palm, okay, don't do it, 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 and you've heard this in the back of your head all the time, right, stop it, just stop it wrong, <laughs> try to make the rule, try to make the rules to keep us safe, okay, and this is what happens right now with porn, is it now that there's, okay, did you put this control on your computer, Okay, are you doing this? Is your wife watching control over everything you look at? Okay, that's all flesh things trying to control our flesh. Mm -hmm. And what happens when you mess one of those up? Mm -hmm. Oh God, you feel worse than ever. And your wife wants to kill you. And your wife wants to kill you. (laughs) I don't didn't want that sentence coming out of your face. Okay. What I don't know. I'm going to ask her again, but she's too busy blushing. Um, <laughs> we'll find out later. Okay, what is Jesus wanting and why? Maybe that's the big question we should be asking. Okay, what does he want to do and why? Okay, it's not about, oh, let me back up a little bit, a couple of things here. It's not about not doing it, yeah, it's, it's about it. not wanting to. It's love and relationship. Mm-hmm. Why I, mean, I want it? If I want it, I'm doing it already. Right. So the question is, why do you why do you want it? What's it do for you? Mm-hmm. Well, I know what my porn did for me. I got that. That was that was pretty exciting for about five seconds, and then I was just massive guilt. Okay, <laughs> we relate to this one. Oh God. And it just wouldn't get out of my mind. It was always there. Okay. So the question is, wrong direction. The question is, what is Jesus wanting and why? We haven't gone back to the head. We haven't gone back to what does he want. How's the relationship? Okay. Religious controls do not work. I got in more trouble with the pastors up in Greeley because they were all talking about all the things they did about con- putting controls. This one pastor had controls on his computer, his screen was always to where the secretary could see it, okay, even when his door was closed, he could look in there and see stuff, and they, they, he built um, levels of controls outside from his office so that he would be kept safe from the porn. And I said, it didn't work. Uh, and he says, what you do is type in something in well, the comic. It didn't work, it was already in his heart. Yeah. Didn't matter. He could have controlled all the things and all, that, but it was still uh, his mind come into it. Mm-hmm. All he does is walk out in the congregation, see some some lady in the congregation that has too low of a neckline, and he's done. Mm-hmm. He's got something fuel to use later. It's just like uh, we get it. I understand. Can religious controls don't work? And so what I got in trouble with is I told them I says um, I did not put controls on my computer. And they all went, what? What is wrong with you? I said, I didn't put controls on my computer. Mm -hmm. They said, but you have a 16-year-old son. What is wrong with you? He says, yeah, I put the controls in the heart of my son, not on my computer. It isn't about what we do in the flesh that's going to hold that thing back. 
if he wants to look at the porn, he's going to find a way to look at it. Yes. I did. And I, it was before the internet. Mm -hmm. Okay? I had to find printed material. Yeah. Okay? And I always did. Jared could have found it anywhere at any given time, no matter what. It's always there. It's always available. No, you put the controls in his heart so he doesn't want it. Right. And then I don't have to worry about it. Right. Okay? They didn't like that answer. They got mad at me for not putting controls on my computer. I says, no, I put them in my son. We don't have an issue. This is if we do, Jesus will deal with it. We're going to take care of this thing. So, kind of crazy. So the issue is, if you still want it, why? Find out. That's what our whole purpose behind all this stuff is. Find out why you want it. What's going on with it? What, where did it come from? When did you come into contact with it? When did you come in covenant with it? When did you yield to it? How did this work? What's going on? This whole thing behind, let's deal with the things and find out why. That made sense. Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. Nah, I'm going to keep on. I just, just, just to spite you, okay? <laughs> Mark 7.13 says this. And I had I debated between Matthew and Mark on these because they say almost the same thing, but this one says it better. And <laughs> making the word of God of no effect by your tradition which you delivered. And many such like things you do. Okay, what was it? Okay, they were getting all over Jesus and he says about their servants, about his disciples, eating with unwashed hands, right? And he says, he says, well, why, so why do they neglect the tradition of the elders? Mm -hmm. And he says, why by your tradition do you nullify the commands of God? Mm -hmm. And you go, what? He says, you say to your parents, whatever gift you would have from my service, I'm giving to the temple, mm -hmm. so it's a gift there, so mm -hmm. I'm just ignoring you completely. Mm -hmm. And he says... Well, no, what was that? He says, therefore you make the word of God of no effect by your tradition, which you've delivered. That is huge. Mm -hmm. uh, what is more important? Okay, what you were taught or what the word says? Jesus. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> because if we're going to really understand the value of the word, it's going to have to be what the word says. And I tried my hardest to figure out how come the rules... We're not always necessarily biblical. Okay? So I had interesting problems with that, right? So, yeah. When your traditions supersede the word, you're in trouble. When your traditions supersede the word, you're in trouble. Okay? And how do you need to know how it's going to work? Well, look at the outcome. <laughs> Oh, you need a little bit closer examination? I mean, how about, is it life or death? Is it light or darkness? Yeah. Okay, you got the idea. Okay. Yeah. So, did how is it working? What's it doing in your life? I got everybody writing here, so if I click one more time, they'll be mad at me. So... <laughs> you might want a picture of this screen. Oh. Is that because everybody else was writing so much? Yeah, I don't know. There we go. Okay. Ephesians chapter 2, 8, 9, and 10, which Kathleen can quote for you right here off the bat. For by grace you are saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God prepared in advance that we should walk in them. We've had these things memorized forever and ever and ever. Now let's find out what it says. For by grace you are saved through faith. It's grace. Yes. It's grace. It's not because you earned it. It's not because you deserved it. It's not because you worked for it. It's not because you did all the right things. It absolutely has nothing to do with it. I could do a whole series on just grace. Mm -hmm. And we still wouldn't understand it. Grace is one of the most elusive concepts to grasp. 
-hmm. It's just simple. He did it because He loves you. It's, it's just that simple. It has nothing to do with you doing anything. It just, it's by grace. Because He wants to, because He loves you. That's it. Simple. Simple, straightforward. And yet, we don't get that. Mm -hmm. Okay? Why does He do stuff? Because He loves you. Why does He do stuff? Because He wanted to. Because He loves you. Why does He do these things? Because He loves you. You know, you get tired of saying it to everybody, but people go, no, that can't be it. There's got to be more to it today. Huh? Yeah. Not of works. I don't know. This is why we memorize this thing. Because we say, oh, we are saved by grace. It's not of works. You can't, you don't have to. And us Baptists learned that just so we could throw stuff at the Catholics. See, it's not at works. No. You just believe by faith. Then we threw our own works in there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> We were just as different. Oh, different, 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 yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we, we do the same works. <laughs> their works don't. Their work. works don't work, but our Over works. Our works. Our our works. Work. Whoa, we're good. You know that is so true, huh? Yep. Yeah. But we got to find out yeah. that we each were created in Christ Jesus unto good works. There was pros. By the way, this is going a direction. Okay, we're created to get these works done, which God prepared in advance that we should walk in them. Now, we have these things that He wants us to do. He made us worthy so we would do them. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want us to do them to become worthy. Amen. Yes, amen is right. Just one more time for those of us on drugs. He didn't make the works to make us worthy. He made us worthy to do the works. Be to become, don't become to be. What a, what a concept. Not because you have to, but because it's who you are and you want to. Yeah, did you read your Bible enough this week? There's no such thing. As soon as you throw the word enough in there, you quantify it. Mm -hmm. Well, then how do you know when enough is enough? When you got the revelation you were supposed to get. And when was that? Monday? Well, no. When you're totally all knowledgeable. All scripture. All scripture. All scripture. When you're yeah. done. Oh, why yeah. didn't you say so? All revelation. Oh, all just, revelation. there it is. Yeah. Then you've read when, enough. Yeah. When you get there, you'll let us know, right? Yeah, I mean, typically it's you, your graduation ceremony. Yeah. Uh, you died. Yeah, you died. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then you have all revelation, and then you've read enough. Yes. <laughs> so why do we do what we do? You, silly. You, because we're silly, okay? <laughs> well, that's as good an answer as any. I'll just yeah, let that one go, and we'll pray and go home. That's about it. No, it's just, no, it's just. Why do you do the things you do? You got to know why, okay? And this is really cool. I read this thing this last week. This is the neatest thing. Why do you do what is right to do? So this this guy had his granddaughter sit with him, and he says, "So, why do you do what is right?" And she says, well, so you don't get in trouble. So that things will work out better for you. And you get rewarded for it. And people will think good of you. Right? And he goes, well, all those are good. He says, but the real reason you do what is right is because it's right. You don't do it to get something. You do it because it's just... It's right. It's what you're supposed to do. It's just doing it because it's the right thing to do. You know? Open a door for somebody. Is that being nasty? No, it's just doing what's right. Opening a door for somebody. Care, helping people carry stuff in. Mm -hmm. to, you know, helping somebody. Doing something. Why do you do it? Mm -hmm. Because it's right. And he says from that day on, every time he'd look at his granddaughter, he'd say, why do you do what's right? And she'd grin. She says, because it's the right thing to do. Oh, that's right. Okay, I just that picture just stuck with me. It just uh, it tickles me. It's why do we do the things we do? Because it's right. Why do I get up in the morning and get in the Word of God? Because it's religious? No, because it's right. I need to. Mm -hmm. I have it because it's relationship with my Jesus. Okay. Why do I pray? Because it's what we do. It's our thing. Okay. I don't do it. Do I pray enough? Uh, again, how do you quantify? And. When it does say pray without ceasing, that means why did you go to sleep last night? <laughs> really, they used to beat us up with that. You're supposed to be praying. 
all the time. My sister, she went to college, and she went from a legalistic school or church up in Idaho Springs, went into a, uh, the Greeley at UNC, and fell in with a college ministry that took legalism to a fine point. And they took it forever. And they were giving her a hard time about studying because she was supposed to be out witnessing. Wow. She's there at school. Wow. And they made her feel guilty all the time. All the time. All the time. Now, I have her testimony sitting right over there on flash drive, so this is all in there, and you can read, listen to it if you want to. But she finally got sick of it and said, that's it. If I'm going to be guilty, I'm going to at least do something right. to feel guilty for. Right and so she <laughs> decided to be promiscuous, and so mm-hmm. she started having sex. Cool. She started doing all sorts of stupid stuff. Mm-hmm. So at one part of her life at school, it was a real trash time of all sorts of sin and discuss- discussing thing, disgusting things. And her little brother was living up in Idaho Springs and, and seeing her and go up and see her up at the campus and different things. And, and then he went to Bible college and all this sort of stuff. She was living this raucous lifestyle. I was living a religious lifestyle, which one of us was doing it right. Mm-hmm. See, and it's just that just tickles me. It just like like this blows my little head. Is it? Yeah. At least she could look at it and say, "Yeah, this was wrong." She repented for it. Mm-hmm. I didn't know I needed to repent for it. Mm-hmm. I just know I needed to repent for everything. You were the older all brother the because it was all the time. You were the prodigal son. I was the older brother of the, the prodigal. Brother, yeah. That's exactly right. Can you ever repent enough? <laughs> you know, I had so many thoughts that I just ah, forget it. Okay. <laughs> no, you can't. You just can't. Okay, it must be to please His heart out of love. Everything's got to be here. Okay, this is where we're getting rid of all the religion stuff. Now, this is one of the things that that uh, Annette and Jennifer were talking about. We we're in here one day, and we were talking about how much of this was just stuff that they were taught how to do, mm-hmm. and yet it just has been beating them up. And this is right. Why are you doing it? You do it out of love. Yeah. You do it, okay? And nothing else. You do it because of a relationship with Him. Be ready to unlearn everything you were taught. That was a hard sw- pill for me to swallow. Huh, you, you and me. Yeah. Well, one of the, the good things that one of my Bible professors said, so I was struggling with something, and he was like, this is what Jesus says, so accept it, because otherwise you're calling him a liar. And that was very helpful. It's yeah. pretty simple, too. Very yeah. simple. Do things because you love him. Do things because you love him. Just do what you see him doing. That's what Jesus did. Yeah. He just did what he saw the Father doing. And there was no religion involved in it. There's no religion involved in it. Do what you do out of love. Not out of requirement. And see, and that it tells me something when I ask somebody, so when was the last time you read your Bible? It tells me something. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to get him to do it out of religion. I want to know what he does out of love. Do you love it? Do you love him? You're doing things because, and, but, well, no, I haven't. I said, then, yeah, that's why you're having problems with mm-hmm. yada, 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 yada. Not because it's religious, but because it's right. I want to know my Jesus better. I want to know what the Word of God has to say. Okay? Oh, somebody, there was a, something I'd read that somebody had suddenly just in a car accident lost their eyesight and couldn't read. And that just filled me with fear. I was just like, it just hit me like, oh God, that's probably, God, that's, well, that's horrible. Not be able to read the Bible, not be able to study it, not to be able to look at that. Just like, whoa, that'd be, that's just, because that's such a major part of my mm-hmm. relationship, you know. Oh, Jesus would make it work and he'd probably heal me or it would be something else. Okay, it wasn't that kind of a fear, but it's just the whole idea behind not being able to do that mm-hmm. just kind of spooked me out. Okay. Find the freedom in relationship. That's the way it should be. And therefore, you can live in peace and joy. 
not the condemnation. Now, has this made sense, guys? Has this been a good one? Okay, this thing has just been... Like I said, it could be a whole series. Hoy, okay, talking about all these different things. But there we are for the day, okay? Kind of fascinating. Uh, it is a fun discussion, okay? Because how, old, how much do we do out of duty versus out of relationship? Out of love, okay? Duty and love are both four-letter words. So... <laughs> Just take that for whatever's worth. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Any questions? Comments? Amen. Okay, Jennifer, did you did you stay awake? I was on the edge of my seat. Oh. That was so good. That's good because if you fall asleep when you're on your edge of your seat, you'll fall off. That's right. That's it right. Did not fall hey, off. praise I God. Didn't stay awake. Yeah. Oh, so very. That was really good. Okay. That that makes sense to what we were discussing before. Oh my gosh. Yes. I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but you understand. No. It's yeah. I really do, and I needed this. Really, really, I did. Groovy. Yep. Any other comments? Anything? I'm going to pray. I'm going to shut this thing down. Yes, ma'am. So, since, uh, it says that he was triumphant over all of that. Are we and him triumphant as well? Over Should be. As the more we give to him, the more his triumph works. Because what does First John say? This is the victory that overcomes our, the world, even our faith. So yeah, it's all about victory. Is you know, so, which is the word nikeo. Mm-hmm. Which where they got the word Nike from, and that it means victory to be an overcomer. Nike, pretty cool. Well, Father God, we thank you for what you've done for us today, and Lord, I thank you for this study. And Lord, I thank you that you are trying so hard to eradicate the religion out of us so that we can have relationship with you. And Lord, I thank you for that. And Lord, this has been a very deep study for me and I enjoy it most thoroughly and I thank you for what you're doing in my life and those around here. Lord, help us to learn this, get it, and walk with you in that love relationship like never before. We just give you all the glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 I thought Nike was after the goddess of the the guy who started Nike got it straight out of the Strong's Concordance. Really? Oh, okay, that's good. Is but it? I thought it was the other way. <laughs> nope. At least that was what I'd heard, and I've been preaching that for a long time. So, <laughs> okay, let's see if I can get... Where is it? There it is. Stop share. That's what I wanted. Greek, huh? The little okay. domes, no? Now where'd my curse my blesser go? Okay. Okay guys, are you blessed? We're blessed. Thank you. God bless you all. And uh we'll see y'all later. If you have any questions, give me a call. And that's where we go. God bless. End meeting for all. And those you know what guys. What I find amazing is that God shows you that thing. You talk about words. The word blotting. He, I literally saw. You know how the ink blotter is. Uh huh. Only just to remove instead of solidifying it, moving it away, moving it out of the out of, out of your yeah. life. That's exactly yeah. right. <laughs> There's the bigger picture. If you guys wanted it. Oh. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. My guess would be Spain, but I would be wrong really? probably. I thought it was maybe Turkey or someplace. Could be. You know, with the domes and the kind of Greek. Can you find out? Catherine's looking at it. She should be able to hover over it. It is. Well, I was going to look on Bing. Yeah, there you, you know, go. It could be. <laughs> yeah, it could be one of those there, that they, there you yeah. go. I think it's someplace in Portugal. Oh, you were close. Uh, yeah.
Yeah. Well, I would. Dang. I don't want to get rid of that because I want to read it. So I can get rid of that one, maybe. There we go. It's Field of Light by an artist that's in. Nope. Yeah, it's just, uh, let's see if it goes what? into this one. Noob. 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 Rats. Oh, no. None of these new ones. I would never do that. Um, I actually used to have one. I just, when I moved, I didn't have. Oh my goodness. Did they really? On purpose? Oh. <sighs> That's okay. I don't care. So, did that did give you enough to play mm -hmm. with on that? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's so amazing that you would even go back to it if 600 some laws couldn't keep people... 613 is what they right, say? Right. Then why would we think we wanna, would want to go back to even to that? What is really funny is that's not even a real count. I bet it's even more than that, huh? Well, it's it's a dumb thing. Is they they counted it on it how many seeds in a pomegranate? <laughs> how many days? That's true. How many days there are this, and how many yeah. like this, and they came together as composite, saying there are six hundred thirteen. They don't even know how they came up with that that number. Right. It's just it's the dumbest thing. So. But my point was that if if that That's all of this couldn't <laughs> yeah couldn't keep people from sinning, why would we think? That's what's so cool about Saul Paul. If anyone could have, then Ex gay pastor right. sues Big Tech. Eh, I'm going to put that down like that, and I'm going to get to that <laughs> later. I want to read that. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I think I was wrong. It's, uh, it's India. India? So yeah. scroll on the, the corner. The it doesn't. It doesn't do anything. I've tried that. And I even went on to Bing.com and asked, and it didn't. What's what, uh, what answering today? I don't know why it's being weird. Good day, for